One year ago, just over 365 days, I launched a SaaS business to the public. And in this video, I'm just going to be walking through. It's going to be really raw, no editing, value, quality, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to be walking through the top five lessons that I've learned from running a SaaS business. I have about 650 paid customers. In fact, I'm going to prove it because I think that you should always be skeptical of what you hear on the internet. So I'm just going to show you 657 paying customers um, and we've got over 4,000 users because we have a free plan. So in this video, I'm just going to be walking through the top five learnings that I have got from running a SaaS business and launching it to the public just over a year ago. This is just going to be the kind of video that I wish I'd had. Either I'd watch sooner, just like accelerate my journey with my SaaS business, or when I just got started. So first of all, the three main metrics that I look at is first of all, churn. You know, what percentage of my customers leaving every month? It's obviously a main indicator to know, are people getting value from my product? Is it sticky? At times, my churn has actually been 18 and a half percent. So very, very high churn because there's an element with my SaaS of like B2B users and B2C and the B2C customers typically obviously churn a lot higher because they're consumers. So yeah, 18 and a half percent of points. And depending on the niche you're in, like a good churn for a B2B SaaS business is like three, four percent from my understanding. And then for B2C, you want to be single digits. So maybe like seven to nine percent. Currently I'm at eleven percent. So there's a lot of work still to do. But first main metric is churn. Then the next one is something called ARPU, and that is basically just revenue per user per month. So how much are your customers paying per month? Obviously, the higher your ARPU, the higher amount of money you're getting from your customers per month. At the moment, mine is £16 per month. So I want to get to like £18.50 is really what I'm gunning for at the moment, getting a single digit churn and then an £18.5 ARPU. Then the third metric that I really focus on is just month for month active subscriber growth. So those three metrics, like how many new customers am I getting? per month as a percentage what is my churn rate which gives me then my net growth obviously you want your new customers to be greater than your customers leaving per month and that churn is actually logo churn not revenue churn which is a complete yeah probably for a separate video so how many new customers we're getting per month how often are they leaving and then also how much are those customers paying me and ultimately what you want to see over time you want to see your churn reduce your rpu increase and your growth rate ideally increase so that over time you're growing faster more money from your customers either because you're increasing your prices or because you're getting a lot of um expansion so people that are starting on a certain plan and then going up to a new plan. So the first biggest lesson, like the three metrics that matter, that's super important, whether you are a SaaS business just getting started or you've been running a SaaS for a long time, you're going to have to focus on those and those sort of, I guess, your North Star metrics in many ways. The second thing, and this is around second learning, this is around product. I've actually got a SaaS coach, well, two SaaS coaches, and what they've taught me is a concept of an aha moment. And an aha moment is basically the point when someone Someone using your product that they're like aha this is exactly what i'm looking for this is the thing that this product is amazing and that is a really key concept because what you should be doing in your onboarding in your product tutorials even in the product design itself you should be pushing people as fast as possible to that aha moment because when they get that aha moment they're much more likely to stay as customers and ultimately again you're going to grow your churn is going to be lower growth rate is going to be high in order to identify your aha moment there's a couple of ways you can do it you can look at screen recording so i have microsoft clarity installed into my SaaS product which essentially allows me to watch screen recordings of anyone using my product definitely get that installed if you don't already if you there's a product analytics software called june and what you do you put tags on every one of your features and then what you're able to do is a cohort analysis so you're able to compare your customers that churn versus customers that stay with you for a given period of time and then see what is the difference in the features that people that churn use versus the features that people that stay. And what you're going to do, you're going to very quickly be able to identify features that people that stay use often, or maybe people that leave don't use at all, and which allows you to find those aha features. A really good example is Slack. Slack found that something like if someone sends a hundred messages, they're more likely to stay. So the aha moment in theory is sending messages and connecting with coworkers. So what they did is literally one of the first 
first things that happens when you join Slack is it gets you to invite other people. Because obviously the more people you invite, the more messages you're able to send. And then the more likely you are to get to that 100 messages, which is what Slack found was the most likely number that someone would stay. So like if you reverse engineer it for your SaaS product, what is that aha moment? What is the thing, the feature that someone uses or the usage number or amount that means that someone is more likely to stay? And what you should be doing in your tutorials and your product onboarding, even how your product is structured, you should be funneling people towards that aha moment. Because again, it's going to reduce your churn. It's also just going to make sure that your customer satisfaction is high, which ultimately is going to increase your ARPU, increase your growth rate. So second learning, focus on your aha moment, dial down to it and make product decisions in order to get there. Now, the third learning, what I'm not going to talk about here is SaaS founders that are watching this, if you hoping that you already know that one of the most important things to do is get on calls with customers, speak to customers, figure out what their pain points are. Don't just create something that you think people want, actually test it and validate it. I'm not going to talk about that. That's for a separate video. But what I've really learned, the difference between a great SaaS product and an okay SaaS product, in my opinion, is when they have a team that is able to take customer feedback and turn that into product decisions that either increase your TAM, increase your market, make the product better or increase your MRR. Because what I see often, and I see this, like let's say you work with a design agency and all they're doing is creating wireframes for you. They're taking your feedback and they're tasting customer feedback back and they are turning that into product they turn that into designs what you can get with those people because they're just taking in the feedback and the instructions directly and creating a product what that actually leads to is a product that yeah it may do what customers say but often what customers say and what they want isn't actually what they want the best SaaS products in my opinion are led by teams that are able to take in the information don't just follow it directly they're able to look at the future roadmap look at how can we fit this request in with all the other things that we've got going on and make this product better to ultimately reduce churn, increase growth rate, and also increase ARPU. Those are the best SaaS businesses because you're able to do product-led growth. And product-led growth is so powerful because you're not having to rely on expensive marketing. You're not having to rely on X, Y, and Z growth channel. The product itself grows the business. And that's really what I've learned, particularly when working with external agencies, design agencies. They'll design something or they'll come and show me something. I'm like, it's missing that Shazam. And particularly as a founder, what I really recommend, especially if you work with a design agency like me to get your wireframes done, like free up as much time as possible, not just to give feedback on the designs, but evaluate how those designs and how those product decisions are going to impact your business and growth, because that is ultimately the most important thing. It's not just adding features blindly as a customer requests them. It's taking a step back and actually evaluating how is this going to impact the business, the growth, and then of course, customer satisfaction. Satisfaction. So lesson one is about metrics. Lesson two what was lesson two. Can't remember what lesson two is. It is early on a Sunday, forgive me. And then obviously lesson three is how you're able to take in that feedback and actually apply it to the product. Moving on to the fourth lesson. Now this is something that specifically applies to my use case and my niche. So it may not apply to yours, but hopefully you can take something valuable from it. Personally, I found that one of the best ways to grow a SaaS business to begin with is in the early stages. Definitely in the latter stages, it's like product-led growth, word of mouth, all that sort of stuff. I think the best way to begin with is founder-led growth because ultimately your SaaS founders watching this when you're getting started the only thing that you really have is you you know you may not have budget I bootstrap my software business using revenue from my agency profits from my agency but really when you get started the only thing that you have is you and the growth that you can create so I think they're like one of the best ways in order to really like grow a SaaS business at the start is founder like growth you as a founder getting on podcasts reaching out to people getting on calls creating YouTube videos writing your emails blogging for me, those are the best things that you can possibly do because until you have product market fit, I think that it is really difficult to do grow a SaaS business through any other way because ultimately people are going to work with the SaaS product and the business and use the SaaS because they believe in the vision and they believe in the idea and probably because they believe in you and that's what definitely worked with me. I was really proactive in getting out there, speaking to target customers, asking about their problems and I think a lot of the early customers, they paid for the product not because it provided too much value because it was crap when it first launched. I think a lot of people paid for the SaaS product 
because they believed in me and they believed what I was trying to build. And I think that a lot of SaaS businesses, obviously it may not work with like enterprise SaaS, but definitely like certain B2B and B2C, like founder like growth is one of the most effective ways. I think it then massively changes when you get product market fit. When you get product market fit, I think the best way to tell whether your product is good or not, and if you have product market fit, is word of mouth. Like when you hit that, like the most effective way for SaaS growth is definitely word of mouth marketing and organic marketing. You shouldn't be relying on founder growth after that, because ultimately what that means is you have key man risk and your SaaS product isn't going to be as valuable. So in the beginning, the best way to grow a SaaS business is definitely founder led growth. You're getting out there, speaking to customers, creating a stir. Once you hit product market fit and you'll know when you hit it, because your best growth channel will be word of mouth marketing. How many people are just searching for your business name and then using your SaaS product? Like like for us, we have like 700 people a month searching for SEO space because our brand recognition and our word of mouth marketing is really, really strong. So lesson number four in the early days, definitely rely on product on founder like growth. And then you want product like growth, word of mouth marketing once you have product market fit. Now, just moving on to the fifth lesson. If you're a SaaS founder watching this, like, let's be honest, a lot of people want to get into SaaS. A lot of people start a SaaS business because like it's known for lucrative exits. And personally, I've had a lot of internal thought about, you know, one day do I want to sell my software business? What do I want that to look like? X, Y, and Z. And I think to be completely honest, it can become a little bit all consuming at times. You're constantly thinking like, do you want to sell this business? Like, what does that look like? Because I think that SaaS exits and selling a SaaS business is often glorified so much. And I'm definitely not. At times, maybe I've felt ashamed at beating that. I'm like, oh, do I want my customers to know that, you know, I'm thinking of selling this business at some point? Like, literally, I only launched it a year ago. But like, when you just deep that a little bit, I think it really requires a mind shift change. Ultimately, if you do want to sell your SaaS business and that is what you want, and like, don't get me wrong, at some point, I would like to sell my software business. I think like most people in software want to sell it at some point because ultimately, that's what makes SaaS so lucrative. And particularly for me, I've structured my business in a way where I've got my SaaS business, but my SaaS business fuels my agency. And my agency is about 10 times revenue wise, the size of my SaaS business, because the SaaS business fuels, fuels the agency. So I have to be honest, structured things in a way where it makes everything hopefully more valuable. But in general, and that actually feeds to the point, like if you're a SaaS founder watching this and you are thinking about, oh, I want to sell my SaaS business, the biggest mindset changed that I had that helped me just personally in terms of motivation, in terms of growing the businesses. Don't think about creating a business that you want to sell and don't think about picking a business model or picking an idea because you're like, oh, I might be able to sell that for a high multiple one day. Just focus on building the best SaaS business that someone would want to buy. For me, what I've really tried to focus on, particularly like I would say in the past few months where like things are going really, really well and, and I am loving it, but I think any SaaS business will definitely really with like you are thinking about oh might someone want to buy this the biggest mindset shift that will actually help you is just focus on creating an incredible business that someone would want to buy because what that does it allows you just to focus on making the product better it allows you to listen to customers it allows you to take a step back and not to get obsessed oh my god is someone going to buy this just no just focus on creating the best possible business which ultimately the best possible business is the one that creates the most value for customers it's the one that has the most enterprise value in my case, it's a business that has a fantastic ecosystem and has a valuable community that ultimately want to buy from the business and value the business. Like that is what's going to increase the value of your software business the most. And that's personally what I'm focusing on. I'm not thinking about selling. Sometimes I do think about it, but I'm not focusing on that. I'm literally just focusing on how can I make the best possible business that someone would want to buy? Because in turn, that'll grow the business more. It'll make more money. Customers will be happier because it's a better product. And then someday in the future, it may lead to an exit. Let's be honest, most SaaS founders in it. So um, yeah, there you are, guys. That is my top five lessons from running a SaaS business for just over a year. If you guys like this style of video, feel free to leave a comment below, subscribe, because I definitely want to be documenting my journey a little bit more. I haven't, to be honest, because I've created a lot more like founder-led, founder growth videos for my SaaS. But like, this is definitely the stuff I love, getting in front of a camera and just sharing value about what it's like to run a SaaS business business, the lessons I've learned. And so yeah, if you enjoy this, feel free to leave a comment, feel free to subscribe, and I will be sharing more content like this, providing value, sharing lessons from my SaaS journey, and hopefully helping yours. So cheers, guys. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.